Ahoy! Ever since I started making videos discussing attribute distribution in New World, one of the most common questions that I get is how should I spend my points with this particular build with these particular weapons? And today I will try and answer that as much as it is possible. Obviously some very weird combinations may not be covered, but I wanted to cover the general common ones that I get a lot of questions about. Right after the intro, we'll take a look back at the previous distributions that I already showed you. We'll talk about attribute perks and we'll talk about a distribution for different weapon combinations. Now, if you're completely new to the game, don't be shocked by what I'm showing next. It will get simpler and I will explain it all. So these two tables may look familiar to some of you if you've already looked at my previous stat distribution videos. These were stats that Deswool found that kind of indicate how the ideal stat distribution in a 1v1 scenario between two melee characters would be if they're hitting each other, both with a single scaling weapon like the Great Axe that only scales with strength, or a dual scaling weapon like the Hatchet that scales with strength and dexterity. But overall, while these charts provided us with some information of the mechanics behind everything, they also left out some additional information that we need to factor in when it comes to spending our points for a weapon. The most important one of those being getting additional effects for reaching certain attribute point thresholds. For example, when you reach 50 points in strength, you get 5% extra damage to melee light attacks. And that is actually a very high increase that is most certainly worth getting. On the other hand, with Dexterity, for example, get 5% critical hit chance, which can be very good if you have a crit build with specific effects, but may not be as good for some others who usually prefer the extra light damage. Now, both the attribute points as well as the effects that you get from investing into points are obviously not set in stone and there may be changes to that with launch or maybe in the future, but we can still have a general idea of which effects are very good and if they change then obviously this can be redone as well. Thanks to the guys from nwdb.info, here is the most up-to-date list of the perk effects. Again, these may change, but this is what they are right now. If you want to see any particular ones, then pause here. But worry not, I will point out the really important ones in the context of the builds. So I made a little list of distributions, but this list needs a fair bit of explanation, so that is what this video is for. We'll begin with some general roles and then go into more specific weapon combinations that may require further steps beyond that. Let's begin looking into the builds, starting with PvE. The first one here is the frontline tank. As a frontline tank, I would highly recommend primarily investing into constitution, probably fully even. You don't really need extra damage as a tank, because if you're serious about tanking, then you need weapons with carnelian gems, with the taunt gems, and at that point you build aggro from your weapon, and that should be enough, especially in combination with your taunt abilities. You will also likely still end up getting some damaging stats anyways, because your gear will likely not just have constitution. Many items, for example, have constitution and strength. As such, the attribute points that you get from leveling can safely be put into constitution. Constitution has a variety of perks such as increased armor, decreased crit damage taken and damage reduction that you most certainly want to have while tanking. As a ranged DPS that uses the traditional ranged weapons, not magical weapons, so in New World the bow and the musket, your main stat is dexterity. Since in PvE you can generally fight from the distance, I would recommend putting most of your points into dexterity. I would however, in late game at least, recommend having 50 points in constitution. This makes it so that health consumables are stronger, which is an extremely strong perk that you'll see here very very often that I generally recommend, because it just gives you a little bit of extra sustain, and it also means you're not as likely to get one shot by certain boss mechanics. Often this will not require you to put any points into constitution though, as your gear will provide you with sufficient constitution anyways. With mages we have the same scenario, but with intelligence instead of dexterity. 50 constitution, just to be safe, just a little bit there, and then max out intelligence for a lot of extra damage and the additional perks from intelligence, such as higher critical hit damage and a ton of elemental damage, which really, really boosts your damage. Now, it is very much possible in New World to play a bruiser in PvE as well. In this case, I would recommend a distribution of somewhere between half-half to 75% strength, your primary attribute, and 25% constitution. It really depends on your exact playstyle, there's obviously a lot of room in between there. If you need more health and more survivability, or if you're gonna go for more extra damage. 
It is worth keeping in mind that as a bruiser you're in melee a lot and there are a lot of cleave mechanics and AoE mechanics that you at least need to pay attention to, so you most certainly want to have at least some constitution to be able to survive those effects. Sometimes you will inevitably swing forward and land in an enemy's attack range, just because that is how Newell's attack animations currently work. Now when we're looking at melee DPS, so less bruiser, more damage, the stat distribution is similar, but it depends a lot more on the specific weapon, so we get to this a little bit later. What I can say is generally I would still recommend 25-50% to of your points in constitution just to have the sufficient survivability because you're still in melee range. As a healer, the general distribution in PvE is similar to that of a mage or a ranged DPS, only that in this case your points are going into focus as your primary attribute, and then again, 50 constitution just to be safe. But that was just the PvE side of things. PvP looks a little bit different. When talking about frontline tanks in PvP, things shift a little bit at least. I generally think that having 300 constitution, which is the maxed out amount for perk effects, is very very good, because this increases the duration of CC by 20%. That is massive for many frontliners in PvP, especially in large scale wars. On the other hand, I think it is useful to have at least some damage going as well, since you will likely be looking to trade enemies and sometimes have to catch up to enemies and do single fights against them. So depending on how much frontline for you is just sitting on a point and capturing it, or it is also going in the enemy backline, the exact distribution can shift a little bit here. I personally would probably go with 300 points into constitution and then everything else into damage, but it depends a lot on what exactly you want to do and it also depends on how the siege weapon scaling actually ends up working and what the war meta ends up being. When it comes to range DPS you can run the same distribution as you run in PvE, but you can also consider investing more points into constitution, especially if your secondary weapon is a dexterity weapon and you use that for melee, so if you're using a rapier or a spear to defend yourself, then that is something worth considering. So it really depends on your playstyle here, but usually most of your points should end up in dexterity. As a mage, nothing really changes, you still want to max out intelligence, like in PvE, and just get 50 points in constitution for the pot effect. This means that you will burn through enemies in wars especially, and you want to have that big AoE damage, and you want it to be as much as possible. So this is the call in my opinion, and the constitution is there so that if anyone engages on you, you don't immediately blow up, and so that you don't get one shot by dexterity snipers, by musket users. If you end up feeling too squishy, you can always, of course, put some more points into constitution. As a bruiser in PvP, I would recommend having at least 150 points in constitution and 150 points into strength later on, once you can afford it, of course. The 150 points in constitution is because that's the last perk, in my opinion, that makes a very significant difference if you're not planning to go super heavy armor. The perks above that are if you're really just going very, very tanky, more than I would think a bruiser would classify for. 150 strength, on the other hand, is extremely important because it increases the stamina damage from melee light and heavy attacks by 50%. Stamina damage is how you get through enemy blocks, and if you're running into the front line at some point, that may be important and you can't always avoid them. Now, I really like this 300 strength perk as well, which gives you grit on your light and heavy attacks, so you cannot be staggered while using them, but that obviously requires very good gear to reach. A melee DPS in Wars is essentially the same as a bruiser, because everyone needs to build a decent amount of constitution, so I just put that with 150 constitution as well, the other points obviously depend on your weapon. As a healer, there is no difference in stat distribution compared to the PvE scenario. Now, I wanted to talk about some more specific common weapon choices as well. The first of those is Spear plus Hatchet, our strength dex mix. In my opinion, the important part here is to reach 150 dexterity. This reduces your dodging cost by 10 stamina, which means in medium weight you now have 4 dodges. And this will be relatively necessary, because both of these abilities don't exactly have the best gap closes. Or rather they do have gap closes, but they are just very slow animated. The hatchet has a mobility increase through Berserk as well, but obviously that's not the same as a quick gap closer. Because of this, I would also recommend a high amount of points in Constitution. I would say, once again, at least 150. Otherwise, in PvP, you will just get kited way too much and you will just die before you can get to the enemy often. Obviously, it depends a bit on your exact weapon spec as well, but this is my impression so far. 
I would also recommend getting 100 points in strength so that you get the increase for light attacks but also the increase for heavy attacks since the spear, especially in PvP, will be using heavy attacks more than other weapons. This means that you need a lot of points for this build to really get off the ground, which is probably one of the problems with this weapon combination. But obviously invest in the order of what you consider more important for yourself and for your playstyle. Then there is the life staff plus a damaging weapon, which is used in PvP and PvE at the moment and may still be a thing unless the life staff gets significant nerfs. In this case, you once again want to max out focus as much as possible. You want to put an ember gem into the secondary weapon Ember gems were nerfed, but they're still extremely strong and they make this build style possible and you're gonna be the paladin, essentially. You'll still want at least 50 constitution, you can invest a lot more if you want to, but I would try and rely more on focus and the healing that comes from that. Then we have the very, very classic Great Axe and Hatchet combination. In this case, I would recommend a 50-50 split of strength and constitution. Or if you want to be more specific, look at the one stat distribution from my more in-depth video. I keep getting questions if you should invest points into Dexterity to get the first perk, which is 50 points and it's 5% critical hit chance, but I don't think with the current state of crit that is worth it at all. So I wouldn't invest into Dexterity here, because your main damaging weapon most of the time will be the Great Axe anyways, and the Hatchet still scales fantastically with strength. If you'd like to run the Fire Staff or Ice Gauntlet with a Rapier, then I would highly recommend using an Int Gem with that. As of now, gems are still broken and they're actually stronger than they're meant to be, and once they are fixed, they should still be extremely strong. With this build, you want to max out intelligence and you want to have at least 50 constitution, as before, and you can consider getting the 50 points in dexterity. This on one hand helps the damage of the rapier a fair amount still, it also can be especially beneficial for the fire staff, which for example has a perk called Singe, which gives you additional weapon damage when you crit an enemy, and is generally a crit-heavy weapon. So while I would generally say that crit is not that good in many situations and is a bit overrated, for the fire staff specifically, I would say it's an advisable option. The same would be the case if you're combining the fire staff or ice gauntlet with the musket, the build would not change here, unless you're planning to do a super cheesy kite build, in which case you would want 150 dexterity to have that extra stamina setting, but that would take away a fair bit from your fire staff and ice gauntlet. If you're running the sword and rapier together, I would recommend at least 150 dexterity and at least 150 constitution. This gives you a high amount of survivability plus the dodge perk from 150 dex, so you will be very 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 hard to kill, especially with all the avoidance skills that these two weapons come with as well. So this should be a super fun one. If you're using spear or rapier and combining it with the bow and musket, you can basically run whatever you would run on a ranged DPS character, so I'll just refer you back to those. If you want to run this sword with the hatchet or great axe or warhammer, then I would refer you back to the Bruiser or the Frontline Tank build, again, depending on what you want to do in terms of PvE and PvP, but really these weapons don't make a difference in terms of how you should spec, because they're all primarily strength weapons, and yeah, just focus on that. It's really more down to how much you want to tank. If you're running the Spear and the Warhammer or Great Axe, I would look towards the Bruiser build, since you will still primarily want to invest into strength here. If you're running weapons with no stat synergy at all and you don't even have something where an int gem or a focus gem could increase the synergy, then I would recommend just choosing one weapon as your primary. There isn't much of a point when you're combining, for example, the bow and warhammer to invest points into both strength and dexterity, because you're just gonna have two half hard hitting weapons all the time and everyone else will have two twice as hard hitting weapons by just investing into one point. Well, not twice, that's not true, but you get the idea. Instead, I would recommend investing highly into constitution because that is something that is independent of your weapon and then just focusing on one of the two as your primary stat. So for example, if you're running a hammer and musket and you say I want to be a trapper, so I want to put people in my trap, put a bomb on them, but then I want to go into melee stance and I want to hammer them down, then you want to put your points into strength because the hammer scales with strength. 
if you want to be a zoner and you're mostly using the hammer to CC them and keep them away while you want to do your damage from range with a musket, then you invest into dexterity. And obviously this logic applies for any other build as well. Generally speaking, I would almost always get at least 150 constitution in those builds, so just to have a balance for PvP in general, because most of these builds seem to be used in PvP primarily. A link to this sheet will be down below and I hope this explains that sufficiently. If you enjoyed this and you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get updated for other in-depth info for New World. We have a ton coming up, we have armor coming up, we have luck coming up, it's all coming up and the launch is coming up soon as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to hop on my Twitch or Discord, the links will be down below as well. And I hope to see you for the next one very, very soon. We're getting really, really close to launch, I'm really, really excited. Thanks for watching, Duke Sloth, out.